Welcome to Electronline. Now we have all the tools to solve a catenary problem. So let's go ahead and try one. Here we have a cable that's hanging between two posts or two supports, A and B. We're given that the weight per unit length is 50 newtons per meter. The length of the cable is 200 meters and the tension at A and B, the tension at the end supports is 10,000 newtons. To help us out, we have all the equations we might need to use right there to the right of the board. And they're asking us for the sag on the cable and the span distance, the distance between the two supports. So when we come over here, we look at it and say, okay, if we want to find the sag of the cable, we need to know the distance to Y and we need to know C. Now the distance to Y can be found by, let's see here, how about this equation right here? If we know the tension at the end supports and we know the weight per unit length, we know the distance to from the origin to the supports. Now, if we come over here, we can draw a coordinate axis on there. So this would be, oop, this would be the Y axis. This would be the X axis. And this distance right here, this distance would be C. Now, of course, on a real cable, there is no such thing as C. C is not really the bottom of the ravine or whatever the, the ground where the cable is hanging above. It's just simply some arbitrary point defined by this ratio of the tension at the bottom of the cable divided by the weight per unit length. So don't be confused that this is actual physical distance, but we still need to be able to calculate what that is in order to, to find out what we're asking for. So in order to find the sag, we need Y minus C. So we can say that sag is equal to y at b minus c, which would be this distance right here. And so we're going to need c, and we're going to need y. Now over here, we realize that y can be obtained by using this equation. So we can say that t at b is equal to the weight per unit length times y at b. Again, t and b are the tension and the distance to the point where we find the tension anywhere, anywhere along the cable. So we can solve for that at the end points right there. So that's why we indicate that, that we're doing it at the end points. So in this case, we can say that Y sub B is equal to the tension at B divided by the weight per unit length. And we're given the tension at the end points. So this is equal to 10,000 newtons divided by 50 meters. Per, oh, not 50 meters. This would be 50 newtons per meter. So 50 goes into there 200 times, that would be 200 meters. So the distance from here to B, this distance right here, which is Y sub B, e, is now equal to 200 meters. So we have the first one, this is equal to 200 meters. Now we have to subtract C from that. Well, C can be defined in various ways. If we know the tension at the bottom of the cable, we would have been able to find it using that, but we don't know the tension at the bottom of the cable. But maybe we can use this right here. Let's see, let's come over here. We're also given the length of the cable, and we know that the length is equal to twice S, because S is only half the length of the cable, if we go all the way to B. And so we can say that S sub B is equal to the length of the cable divided by two, which in this case is 200 meters, divided by two, which is equal to 100 meters. So we do know S, we do know Y, so that means we can say that C is equal to the square root of Y minus S, and this is squared, and of course we need to take it at the right, at the same point, we don't care what point we take it at, but since we know the information at point B, we'll go ahead and use those values at point B. So this becomes equal to the square root of Y sub B, which is 200 meters, squared minus S sub B, and S sub B we said was 100 meters squared. So this becomes equal to the square root of, well, let's see, we need a calculator for that. So we have 200 squared minus 100 squared. Take the square root of that, we get 173.2 meters. So that would be, uh, well, Go ahead, we don't need that part. We'll simply just use a calculator. So it's 173.2 meters for C at B. Well, we shouldn't really write C at B. 
That's not necessary. C will be the same number no matter what, but we do have to put in values from the same point, so we'll go ahead and do that. We can plug that in here, so we have 173.2, and so the sag would then be 26.8 meters. And so that's how we find the sag in this case. Now we need to know the span. So to get the span, well, let's see here, we need 2 times x of b, so we need to find x. And x can be figured out using this equation right here. All right, let's use that equation. So we have x at b is equal to c, which we now have. c, let's see, we have c right here, times the natural log of s plus y divided by c. And of course, we're going to take it s at b and y at b to give us x at b. c will be the same number regardless what point we pick. So in this case, we could say that this is equal to, we picked c to be 173.2 times the natural log of s at b, which let's see here, s at b, where do I have s at b? Right here, that's 100 plus y at b, which is 200, divided by c, which is 173.2. All right, that should give us x of b, that would be 300, divided by 173.2. Take the natural log of that and multiply that times 173.2, and I get 95.14, so 95.14 meters, x of b, which means that the distance, the distance from the lowest point on the cable to where the support is in the horizontal direction, this distance right here, is equal to 95.14 meters. And we know that the span is twice that distance, 2 times x sub b, so the span is equal to 2 times x sub b, which is equal to 2 times 95.14 meters, and so let's see here, times 2, we get this equal to 190.3 meters to one decimal place. So there we go. That's how we use those equations. Again, you kind of need to rummage around in there, find the right equations, use them to our ability and to our benefit, and that's how we find the sag and the span in this particular example. And that's how it's done.